Have you ever looked at a pet cat and thought, your ancestors would be so disappointed in you? Fat, lazy, and easily distracted by laser pointers, the common house cat has really fallen quite a ways from other members of their much bigger, more powerful feline family. When you think of powerful felines, you probably think of lions or tigers, the kings of their respective domains. However, there's another type of cat you should consider among the most respectable cats. The fucking lynx! The patient, deadly, silent predators are not only biologically interesting, but they're cute too. Just take a look at those ears. And their chin! Now look at your cat. A flabby waste of space. Pathetic. Hi, I'm Jay, and you're watching Bad Science, the only show on YouTube that will be honest about your dumb cat. Every week, we go on an adventure through the animal kingdom to uncover the real facts behind some of nature's most interesting creatures. And I present those facts to you the only way I know how. Badly. This week, we're talking about the adorable fluff balls of death. Lynxes. So grab your snowshoes and let's get started. To kick things off, what kind of a name is Lynx? It sounds a little strange and dangerously close to a particular hero of Hyrule who spends his time saving Princess Zelda. The truth is that the word lynx is a Greek word that means light or brightness. It is believed that these animals were given this name because of their shiny, reflective eyes. If you saw a lynx's eyes on a dark road, you'd probably think they were headlights of a car. Next, we should acknowledge something. There are four very different types of lynx that live in very different areas of the planet. The four lynx species are the Canada lynx, the Iberian lynx, the Eurasian lynx, and the bobcat. The Canadian lynx prowls the forest and tundra regions of the northern US, Canada, and Alaska. The Iberian lynx is native to the Iberian Peninsula in southern Europe, which includes Portugal, Spain, Gibraltar, and part of France. This is the only endangered lynx. The Eurasian lynx can be found in the forests of Europe, Central Asia, and Siberia. It is the largest of the four lynx species and can weigh more than 60 pounds. The bobcat is a good old American wildcat which can be found in most of the continental United States, as well as southern Canada and northern Mexico. But like, only when they're on vacation. They're proud Americans and bleed red, white, and blue, just like a bald eagle. Each of these lynxes can vary in size and features, but there are a few distinguishing marks to tell a lynx apart from other big cats. All lynxes have characteristic short, stubby tails, which they're self-conscious about, adorable tufts of fur on the tips of their ears, paws with thick pads, and ruffled tufts of chin fur that kind of make them look like an old-timey dude with a weird beard, like this guy. The thickness of their fur and paws changes depending on where they live. Bobcats don't necessarily have the fur or the paws of the Canada lynx, which has to survive in areas that get deep snow. That would be like putting spinning rims on a gold jet ski, completely pointless. The four currently living species of lynx are believed to have evolved from lynx Aceodorensis a big cat that is believed to have existed in the late Pliocene or Pleistocene epochs. Scientists believe this creature originated in Africa, but fossils of it were found in Europe in the town of Isore, France. This means that the ancient lynx was probably chasing down an early ancestor of Remy from Ratatouille. All lynxes are solitary creatures, and will only travel in small groups occasionally if things get tough. The lynx that live in colder climates, such as the Canada lynx, have specially adapted paws or if you prefer, weird feet. In order to keep them from sinking into deep snow when they're out hunting, the lynx's paws act like snowshoes, spreading out with every step to cover more surface area. Most people have to buy their own snowshoes, but nature always provides generously. In addition to their range of spread and thick padding, the toes on each paw are webbed to provide extra stability. Our dear friends need all the support they can get in the harsh elements they live in due to the way they hunt. You've probably seen those videos of cheetahs and lions chasing down their prey, right? Well, that's not really how lynxes hunt. They prefer to go slow and extremely quiet, sneaking up on their prey until they can get the drop on them without having to exert too much energy. Basically, they're fucking ninjas. Hey, wait! Now's the time! Subscribe to the channel to be entertained while learning. It's free! What kind of diet does a lynx have with those kinds of skills? surprisingly a pretty varied one. They primarily eat small game like snowshoe hares, foxes, squirrels, birds, and even smaller things like voles and grouse. But they aren't afraid of munching on bigger animals like turkeys or deer. Snowshoe hares are really its favorite meal though, so much so that the two animals share a direct connection. 
If an area's snowshoe hare population declines, the link population in that same area will also decrease, and vice versa. This crazy cat's diet is so diverse that even just their presence in an ecosystem can improve it. Because lynx can successfully hunt animals big and small, it causes all of the animals in the area to be on high alert and avoid areas that would make them easy targets, such as open grazing areas or with the banks of rivers. As animals continue to avoid these areas, they are allowed to flourish and introduce new growth. When was the last time your presence improved anything, viewer? When the situation calls for it, lynx can actually exert some energy. They aren't as lazy as your chubby pet cats. Lynxes are great at swimming and even better at climbing. Their webbed paws allow them to move through the water swiftly, while their powerful bouncing hind legs and claws give them the ability to dart up a tree like a squirrel. More precisely, the squirrel possessed by the devil. As I previously mentioned, lynxes are very solitary creatures, meaning they don't really enjoy the presence of other lynx that aren't their offspring. To avoid crossing paths or entering the domain of another lynx, these cats participate in a stinky, smelly tradition that is shared among many different types of animals. They pee on things. Well, it's called marking territory, but that's really what it is. Male lynxes pee on trees and scratch the trunks to carve out their own little space, and they'll even leave little poops at certain locations for a similar smelly effect. Outside of marking purposes, lynxes will usually bury their poop like a regular cat. There aren't many toilets available in the forests they live in. Lynxes crossing over into each other's territories can cause tense standoffs, and that's not the only time these animals will fight their own kind. When mating season rolls around in late winter, male lynxes forego their typical silent, deadly nature to emit high-pitched shrieks and wails as they fight other males for a chance to mate. Hey, we've all been there, am I right? Once the mating process completes after an appropriate amount of fighting and bloodshed, female lynx retreat to their lairs. I'm serious, that's what their homes are called, lairs. Lynxes don't make nests. Instead, they find natural spaces to call home while they gestate their offspring. It might be the hollow of a tree, a vacated burrow, or even a craggy space under a rocky ledge. But whatever it is, it's called a lair. Mama lynxes kick back in their lynx lairs for most of their pregnancy, between 63 and 72 days. After that, the baby lynx is born, and it's completely helpless. Lynx cubs don't even open their eyes for 10 days, and their tiny paws won't touch the snow of the outside world until they're 5 weeks old. Without their mothers, baby lynx would never be able to survive their first few months of life due to the harsh climates of their environment. Almost half of the lynx offspring born every year don't survive, even with their mother's love and care. However, after they've been weaned off of their mother's milk and learned all of the hunting tricks their mother has to teach them, the young lynxes who do make it go off on their own to start their solitary life the following spring. For many reasons, the world those lynx cubs enter is getting more dangerous for them every year. Lynxes are hunted for their pelts, the snowshoe rabbits they love eating are being wiped out by a man-made disease, and constant construction is causing their habitats to become fragmented and difficult to thrive in. There's an unfortunately high number of lynxes that die from being hit by cars as they attempt to cross roads that were built through their habitats. While humanity continues to grow and claim land that belongs to the creatures of the earth, it's important that we remember to be considerate of the creatures around us, like the lynx. They don't have to pay taxes or deal with politicians, but they're just trying to live their life just like we are. Oh, and if you walk past a tree that smells like pee, you're probably in a lynx's territory. That's all for this episode. If you enjoyed knowing a little more about the life of these cats of the frozen wastes, remember to support the EdPop channel by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. See you next time.